Hey everybody, two alpha gals here. I'm Debbie Nichols. And I'm Candace Mathis. And you're listening to In the Tall Grass, where we're sharing stories of reinvention, resilience, and rediscovering joy. Whether it's facing alpha gal syndrome or any other redefining chapter of life, we all have to learn how to navigate the journey through the tall grass. So here we go. This episode is brought to you by Insect Shield. Candace, what is your favorite thing about spring? Well, I love taking longer walks without getting so cold. How about you? <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you there. Uh, I think probably I'd have to go with cutting my flowers. Like those are just starting to come up in my yard now. So I feel like they're fresh on my mind. But you know what those two things have in common? Exposure to ticks. Ugh, that's exactly right. And even though we're still having a lot of chilly days, especially here in Virginia, the ticks are already out. But according to the experts, the best protection against ticks is permethrin treated apparel and gear. So we're happy to share that Insect Shield's EPA registered insect repellent apparel makes it even easier to protect yourself from insects like ticks that could potentially cause disease. That's right. So check out insectshield.com. For more information on their EPA registered products and use code 2AlphaGals, that's T-W-O, AlphaGals, to save 15% on your first order. Your purchase not only saves you money, but it also directly supports the work we're doing at 2AlphaGals. Hello, everybody. We are super excited today to welcome Dr. Jabin Moore a doctor of chiropractic and licensed functional medicine practitioner. He founded Redefining Wellness Center in Kansas City, Missouri. Dr. Jabin, thank you so much for being here with us today. Well, thanks for having me. I'd love to spread information and just be able to give back with all the info. I mean, to be honest, clients have been teaching me since uh, about 10 years ago when I went into practice and before that, my own health journey. So I remember when I uh, couldn't find an answer and all I was looking for is somebody to give me a piece of information. So it's a passion. It's so nice to hear that too, because I think living with alpha-gal syndrome, we've been there where we were just looking for somebody to give us some piece of information. And so that's what it really set us on this journey of two alpha gals. So I am excited to dive in with you on what got you here, what kind of information you're sharing, but maybe we could start with just sharing a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. Uh, so, uh, as you mentioned, Dr. J. Moore, a chiropractor, but, uh, while I was going through school, I got sick and didn't know what it was. It was Lyme. So that drove me right into, uh, learning about Lyme. And now in my practice, we work with complex chronic illness. So we have anything from alpha gal to Lyme, mast cell mold, chronic inflammatory response syndrome. So a lot of the letters that just mean you don't feel well and you're probably not getting a lot of answers and you're just looking for somebody that can maybe do a little digging for you. So that's what we do pretty much every day is just try and figure out how to get someone another step, another piece of information. I love that. And okay. So can we take it like one step further? Can you explain a little bit in more detail about like, how does that vary? How does it differ functional medicine and how you're getting to the root cause from allopathic medicine? How do you take it kind of that to that next step? So I'll take it from that. And then I'll also take it another step further. Um, So when you're looking at medicine, uh, a lot of times people are giving you a pill for your ill. Mm -hmm. So you have a symptom and somebody's giving you a band aid to take care of that, whether it's an NSAID when you have pain or an antibiotic when you have repeated bacterial infections and they're not actually figuring out why it's repeating, right? So you get a um, solution, but it's not for the actual problem. It's just a Band-Aid. So functional medicine, depending upon who you go to, can be the same way. So they could be giving you a supplement Mm -hmm. for you to Band-Aid a problem. So I can give you turmeric, which is a great herb, but it's anti-inflammatory. It may not take care of the thing generating the inflammation. So then as I've been in practice longer, I keep digging, trying to find root causes of what is actually leading to people's issues. So what I'm looking for is a cause so that you can get a long-term reduction or 
you know, stopping of those symptoms. And oftentimes my clients will hear me say something to the effect of like, you know, here's a band aid so that we can help with that symptom, but it's not the solution over here is the solution. And we're going to start working through that because my goal is not to be your next doctor. It's to be the last one, at least within this, like, chronic illness issue. Like you're still going to have doctors, but I want to be the last one for this chronic problem. Right. Do you get a lot of people showing up to see you when they've already seen like doctor after doctor after doctor without answers, without solutions, without reduction in pain? You know, it's funny. I randomly will get someone who has not been to 10 or 20 docs. Um, Typically that is who I see. Uh, I do have a clinic with five different practitioners. So um, t- they tend to make sure that the people with the longest history get to me. And sometimes the the people that are easier end up with some of my other providers at times. Um, so I don't get as many people that I get to actually explain health to anymore. I actually get to go through like the process of, you know, this is what Lyme disease is, or this is what mast cell is. Usually people are coming to me and they know pretty much everything. They have a PhD in chronic illness from just life experience. Yeah. And they're probably, and they'll even tell me, they teach most of their providers about a lot of the different possible interactions or interventions or, you know, what it's like to be going through this. So most of the time, by the time they get to me, they're like, yeah, I can already read a note test, a blood test, a hair test. <laughs> like they're, they're on it. And I'm just trying to help fill in the gaps for them where they don't have, or because I've been doing this for a decade and I've seen thousands of patients um, be able to kind of put together my experience to, to help educate them on what what options are in front of them. Yeah. And I think that that resonates a lot with Debbie and I, and probably a lot of our listeners being that it took us so long to get our diagnosis and Still, we know more than most ER doctors. If we go in for anaphylaxis, you know, it just the examples we could just go on forever about. But I think you offer such a unique perspective, being that you went through your own health journey in your early 20s. Can you share a little bit more about that journey and that time in your life? So I was a collegiate athlete. Okay. Um, and not to brag, but for reference, I was a multiple time all American shot put hammer through high school and college. So I was, I was a decent athlete. Um, but toward my end of my career, I started feeling worse. And then I went into chiropractic school and lost 60 pounds on purpose because I was a shot putter. So I was a big boy on purpose. Um, and then as I lost that weight, I thought, you know, I should be feeling healthy. I ended up getting to a point where I was, I physically looked good. Like I had abs, I was fit, I was healthy looking, but I felt awful. Uh, brain fog and fatigue were creeping up. I ended up with hormone dysfunction and erectile dysfunction, right? So it was, it was pretty devastating as a 25 year old male to, to yeah. crash like that when I was doing everything that I knew to be well, like I was the best physical shape of my life. I looked okay. So nobody wanted to believe that I didn't feel well. I didn't have getting sore throats for, I had sore throat for like six months at one point. Um, I ended up developing a bunch of food allergies. So I was allergic to almonds, gluten, dairy, not uh, chicken, berries. I'm trying to remember, it's been so long now. And I got rid of all of the allergies through healing that I don't have to like think about them anymore. Um, So I had all of that going on back in my journey. And, you know, the biggest thing, like so many people is this was before Instagram was big. If if, if Instagram was even around when I was 25, I'm 37 now, 12 years ago. And there was no like, go on Instagram and look up an Instagram doctor or go on Facebook or YouTube or really anything big like that at the time. It was Go to a, I was going to functional medicine conferences asking questions and I just couldn't get answers. Wow. So that's part of the reason why I love going on podcasts and I have a, a social media that I put a lot of time and effort and honestly uh, to get my team to help me make infographics that look nice because uh, that's <laughs> not my skill set um, to get all that put together and educate because I just wanted an answer. Like that was my biggest thing. I just wanted an answer. And after I finally 
ran into somebody who's like, maybe you have Lyme disease. And I was like, okay, tell me more. And they said, well, we don't really know anymore, but we heard about it one time. And since you haven't found an answer, maybe that's it. I'm like, oh, great. So I went and searched <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up finding a guy in Wisconsin who was a Lyme expert, Alan Lindsley. And after getting to him and him identifying um, what he needed to do to feel better, he started working with me. And I can tell you in a few weeks, honestly, I started feeling a difference. Now that's not always super common. I was really fortunate that like, if you look at me with my epigenetics or with um, depending upon what type of thing, like I'm usually built pretty robustly. I should be strong. My sickness, I think actually started when I was in a basement full of mold. Like I could actually see it growing up the wall. I remember it to this day. And I was just going, I'm a poor college kid. This is a cheap place to live. Who cares? It just smells bad. Little did I know it does a lot more than that. It can mess up your health. And I think that's when it weakened me. Lime started. I lost all the weight, which pushed all the mold out of my fat tissue into my body, which then really triggered a huge cascade of symptoms. And then by the time I got to Lindsley, I wasn't in mold anymore. So once he started knocking down the infections, my body was able to recover and get out of it a little quick, more quickly than some people can. Did you treat your Lyme in an allopathic way? I did not. No. I mean, I had been on antibiotics that never did anything for me, but it wasn't for Lyme specifically. Um, I, the only person I ever talked to that knew about Lyme was Lindsley because at the time, and when would that have been 12 years ago, like 2012, um, Lyme just wasn't as big on the map, especially here in the Midwest. Okay. okay. Did you test positive in the office? He did a few different types of testing to find it. Okay. So he was doing anything from muscle testing to, to, uh, to blood testing and uh, even did some frequency testing and he was able to find it then. And really the big thing that, that proved it to me, cause nothing in blood ever came back positive was he started treating for Lyme. And then I got better, which, I mean, as you guys probably have heard a hundred times with Lyme, the likelihood of a test coming back positive, especially like a Western blot is so low. I mean, it's accuracy. I think in one year, 2015, they released a statement saying we caught 25,000 people, but we think more like 300,000 to a million were positive. Yeah. Do you know my son actually tested positive on the lab core test for Lyme oh, wow. a couple of years ago? And I was like, this is real bad. <laughs> you know, like if he, if he popped positive on that test, I knew that we were in it and um, we did some some functional medicine treatments with him too. And it, a lot of the things you were saying resonated with me on his journey. It, it just, it's hard to see mm -hmm. some, someone young that was athletic kind of start losing all this weight and all the things it's, uh, you know, it coincides a lot with what we dealt with, with him. So now, so I guess you were, you know, after you went through that, how long did it take you before, like to see that doctor, how long did you, go through those treatments before you started noticing a big difference? I say it was probably a month before I noticed a difference. Okay. And then I probably treated for about six months, but he treated then differently than I do things now. So in my journey of graduating and becoming a provider and being able to help other people, I've had to learn about mold because we didn't talk about mold. I learned about metal because we didn't do anything for metal parasites we didn't do anything for any of those. It was, it was bacterial work almost primarily. So I've actually done like bacteria and then, you know, I learned a little bit more cause I had a client that couldn't get better and I did parasite. And then with each learning curve for clients, I've done more and I've had Herx's like little baby ones, even when I was well past that, because I'm like, Oh, there's another layer that I get to take off. And I feel even healthier and stronger because I mean, now like, what I try to tell my clients, the goal is this, that you can live your life and have the ability to adapt to life. When you are healthy and strong, most of your food allergies are going to go away. Now, maybe you don't like gluten because it's, I'm not sure if that's still a food anymore um, or just some processed goop, but um, you know, you should be able to live life with very, very few symptoms once you're well. Right. That's interesting. We think about this all the time, obviously for us, 
food allergies are such a major part of our diagnosis, right? We, mm -hmm. it is alpha gal syndrome is a food allergy. It's more than that. We all know that. Right. But so many people we talk to, including myself, including Candace have other food allergies. Mine didn't develop until I was already experiencing symptoms of alpha gal syndrome. So it's really interesting to hear you say that, you know, thinking about your body being in a weaker state that it would sort of accept these food allergies, but that there's potential for some of them to go away if you get strong and healthy again. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I remember being early in practice and there's this transition that functional medicine doctors go through. It seems like, cause I just know so many who have, and you start off being a little bit more allopathic minded because that's probably the way that you came from trained. I mean, even as a chiropractor, we still read, we still learn to read labs from allopathic books, right? We still learn to um, look at things in the same way. The definitions of disease is still all from the allopathic side of things. And then you're taking, at least from a chiropractor's perspective, thinking, okay, well, if you can remove interference, the body will get well. So then you start developing your process within your clinic. And as you're going through this process, you realize that, okay, if the body's overwhelmed by Lyme disease, in my case, plus mold, plus in chiropractic school, you're taking 30 credit hours plus a semester trying to get through that. So I got all of this stress and that stress was chemical from mold, infectious from Lyme and its co-infections stress from life, it overwhelms your body's ability to adapt. And when you become overwhelmed just in general, so whether you're a mom listening, you're um, a student or anyone else, when you become overwhelmed, what happens? You probably become a little bit short with people, right? I'm just talking about like overwhelmed in life. Like if you're super overwhelmed and somebody asks you a bunch of questions, you might like, you know, bite their head off a little bit not on purpose, but you're just, you're, you're being short. Well, what happens with your immune system when it becomes overwhelmed? You create overreactive immune responses. So I tell people all the time, it's your body gets into the state. Called, I call it shoot first, ask questions later. So it shoots first at, I don't know, red meat, or in my case, almonds and berries and chicken, right? Like the most weird conglomeration of foods, but that's what my body attacked. So then I would get sick from eating those things. It doesn't make sense that I developed an allergy at 24 or whatever age that started. I can't even remember now out of, for no reason, because the food isn't bad for me. My body already knew that. So then it's a misidentification of that protein that the body decided for whatever reason, whatever stress response, whatever collateral damage that it is now a problem. So is it not theoretically possible for the body then once it's out of that stress response and relaxed to discontinue this misidentification? Well, if you look at autoimmune studies of people who are autoimmune, there are different times where people go into remission from autoimmune disease. Well, why? And the, the medical journals, they don't really know why, but what I've seen is stress was removed. Mm -hmm. So if I take a person in that has Lyme and mold and parasites and life stress and trauma in their childhood, and I get them to do some nervous system work, we clean up their gut, we remove some toxicity, we get them into a safe place. And now their body and immune system is relaxed and read. And again, I said, did a nervous system work and we retrain the nervous system I have seen so many food allergies go by the wayside. I mean, it's literally a goal in my note for some people like goal, Andy's ice cream. Now, am I telling you that's good for you? I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm just saying that's the goal from the 14 year old I was working with. And when he ate Andy's ice cream, his mom cried and then she called me and couldn't tell me. So she had to have him tell me because she was crying again because he got his Andy's ice cream. Right. Yeah. And I think it's so important just listening to you talk about this just from my own experience, I have an autoimmune disease. I have Hashimoto's and I don't know what came first. I definitely lived in a house that had mold, alpha gal, you know, the tick borne illness, all of these assaults is kind of how Debbie and I talk about this. And like our bucket just got like, mine got overflowed. Hers got over, you know, overflowed. And 
it's like an onion, right? Like your, your body, you have to be patient. I think with unfolding all of these layers, one thing at a time. And when I really started doing more of the nervous system work, I did EMDR therapy. I started healing from, you know, the negative coping, um, you know, mechanisms that I had within my body and how I was dealing with things. And once that started to be healed, then I started to see these other improvements. You know, I still can't eat red meat or dairy or any mammalian byproducts, but I'm able to go about my day in a, in a much like higher quality of life. Now, you know, I'm not reacting to the chemical scent in the grocery store. Like I once was and, Um, do you have any advice for people that are really struggling with the overwhelm of it? You know, cause I think it is easy to get caught in the dark space of like, what do I do first? And is this going to work? And what do you tell someone that comes to see you to kind of get them on that, that, like taking that baby step into a positive mind frame? Yeah. Chronic illness or, or you know, these multiple complex chronic conditions are not easy. And there's not one thing that's going to solve the whole problem. And that's the first thing that I talk to people about. It's like, it's not easy. So I I just tell them that there's going to be some steps. It's going to take a little while. And I'm honest. Yeah. I'm also a minimalist. So, so often when people come into my clinic and by minimalist, I mean, within my clinical practice, kind of my life too, a little bit. It's like, well, who needs all this stuff? And and that that transfers into when a person comes in and they're on 50 supplements, they go, man, you have expensive poop. (laughs) (laughs) It's so true. (laughs) I'm like, your gut cannot absorb that. A healthy person who's perfectly well cannot absorb all of that. Like it's not going to happen. Not to mention, do you need all that? So what I end up doing with people is I try to make things simple. Now there's a lot to healing, but it's, it can be a step process and we just need to find what our priorities is. And then we put together a process. So when you look at my note, step one, we throw in all the testing. We run the testing. We put together a roadmap. Once we have that roadmap back of all the different things we've got going on, there's three categories. There's starters, stressors, and then there's effects. The starters are the things you're probably depleted of or that we need to change in your life that are going to be real quick. So if you're taking something you're toxic to, stop it. If you're deficient of something that I think is a high level need to get your body going, we get on it. Then we go into the stressors category. And in the stressors category, that's going to say infections, toxins, and trauma. That's what we're looking for. And then the effects, that's your symptoms. That's who knows what you have in our labs. It could be mitochondrial dysfunction. It could be neurotransmitter dysfunction. It could be food allergies. It's the effects of the stressors. And I put it that way because it starts to make things seem like there's a process. Because when people don't have a process, it's stressful. And then once you get past the roadmap, which is just set at the top of the note, the first thing in there says safe place air, food, water, hygiene, dental, and implants. Is your air in your home clean? Yes or no? Have you tested it? If it's not clean, we got to fix that. And what I'm looking for is not perfection. I'm looking for good enough to be in a place where your body would be able to heal. Mm -hmm. So we run an army test. We do some mold testing if we need to make sure there's not radon in the basement. And then we go into food. Are we eating organic? Okay. Are we eating... Are we not eating foods that we know make us not feel well? So if you're addicted to dairy and you keep eating ice cream and you know, every time you eat ice cream, you get sick and you have diarrhea, we got to quit that. Right. But I'm not going to chase the let's run a food panel when your body's in a really inflamed state that has 184 foods on it and you react to two thirds of them. And now we're stressed out because you can't eat anything. We're not going to do that. That just doesn't make sense to me. Um, a few food allergies. Sure. If you feel bad eating it, don't do it again for now, for now, not forever. If you want that Andy's ice cream, maybe later, not right now. And then we go into hygiene is your house, all the cleaning products, all the 
hygiene, shampoos, makeups, is that all clean and organic and will pass the EWG um, scanning, which environmental workers group, for those who aren't familiar with the acronym, you can like literally scan all your products, make sure they're, they're clean. Make sure we don't have any dental cavitations, make sure we don't have any implants in our bodies that could be affecting us in a negative way. So we make sure that you have the capacity to heal. That's step one. If you don't, it makes it really hard to heal if your body is getting assaulted every single day by things in your environment. Right. So we just put together a, a nice little plan for that. Then we go, okay, now, once you've got a safe place, do you feel safe there? For so many of the people I work with, they don't. They have anxiety, they have depression, they have irritability. Their body isn't a safe place because it's been trained for so long to not feel safe by the sickness um, or maybe trauma in the past that we need to work through that. So I love primal trust, neurofeedback, EMDR as some of the different tools that I recommend. There are so many more, but those are probably the top three neuro or uh, MBSR and neuro emotional technique and emotional freedom technique or some other ones. There's, there's a lot of good ones out there. We just got to find something that fits you, your time frames, And sometimes we got to make sure that your time frames fit your mental health and wellness um, I'm not a mental health provider. So if it's therapy, we need to send you to, we send you to therapy. Um, EMDR being one of the, the techniques, if it's more exercises for breathing and nervous system, we go to primal trust. So we find somebody, something that will fit you because if you don't feel safe and you're running, you feel like you're running and running and running because your body is in this fight or flight state. The way I say it is if you're running from a bear the only thing you care about is one more step. You're not worried about detoxing right? or healing mm -hmm. or resting. You're worried about one more step. Now, when you get free from it, you can think about all those other things. So that's where the nervous system work comes in because that will reduce the strain that your body's under, allowing for it to focus on healing and not running anymore. So then you'll see frequent urination come down. You'll see sodium and potassium on your hair test go back to normal. You'll see your albumin level and your blood come back to normal. You will start to see your cortisol and adrenal hormones going back to normal. So there's a lot of tests you can run to identify this. But if you're sitting here listening to me, if your shoulders are up near your ears, we're probably not in a good place. If your your your, your arms are both pulled forward and your you know your shoulders are trying to touch each other in the front you're probably not in a good place. If I come up behind you and tap you on the shoulder and you know you're going to jump out of your chair, you're not in a good place. <laughs> this is so important. And it's so cool that you're, you incorporate this into your standard practice, right? Like you said, you're not a mental health provider. You send people to that. But Candace and I can both attest to some of these techniques. Specifically, I'm thinking EMDR that uh, changed our lives, mm -hmm. right? For the better. Like it, it, felt miraculous to be honest. So I love that you tie this into your, your treatment plan. Well, and it shows that you are about the whole being, right? I think that is what is missing in a lot of, um, practices, regardless of who they may be, you know, that a lot of providers don't look at you that way. They look at you through a very narrow lens and a very, I don't know, one system approach instead of, you know, we are a, a whole being that you have to address multiple layers or, or, or it's not going to work. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the purpose behind like the process I take people through is to try to not miss because there are so many possibilities, right? Like if you have dental issues, I got to send you to a dentist. Mm -hmm. I had one woman do a new client appointment with me. Uh, for instance, and and she'd been through like everything. She'd done everything and she did not get well. And I go, wow. Like, I'm not sure if I know of something that you haven't done that I want to do with you. And then I finally got to the dental section and I'm like, you've never gone to a bio dentist and you have all of these different metals in your mouth and cavitate. Like she didn't know she had cavitations, but she had root canals. So I was, I was assuming so I sent her to the dentist and, and she called back to our clinic and she spent a ton of money with the dentist, which, you know, that's not what I wanted for her to have to do, but she was, she goes, this is what she said to my team. Tell him he saved my life. I'm 60% better. I had multiple metals galvanizing in my mouth. 
I had infection that pussed out, like out of her jaw, black pus from infections in her jaw. Um, And she was like 60% better just from going to the dentist, which that doesn't happen to everyone. But for her, she'd already done all this other work. So I was just like, to be honest with you, go to the dentist before you even come back to my clinic, just so that I know that that's taken care of before we work together for, and moving forward. Well, it was like six months before this call came in. And um, she ended up wanting to work with my other providers because my other provider was less expensive. I spent too much time doing this um, and making sure that I teach all my other providers. Cause at one point I had like a nine month wait list and I was like, well, that doesn't do anybody any good if, if my list is this long. So I started training providers. So um, I have some providers that just cost less in my clinic than I did. So she saw my other provider and, you know, things worked out the way they were supposed to, and she got better. And, but yeah, it's just the longer you're in practice, the more, you know, you don't know that's just life in general, but the longer I'm in practice, I'm like, man, I, I, I don't know about dental. I mean, I know enough to get someone to a dentist, but I don't know how to do it. Um, just like the mental health aspect. I'm like, I can identify that you're needing some help just by talking with you, but that's not my scope. So like, let's go over here. Um, but then after we get through the safe place and we get through the feel safe, then we go into the actual protocol where we've got to work through um, optimizing the body and the nervous or not the nervous system and the immune system to be able to handle the overgrowth of organisms. So Lyme, bark, bab, or lichia, parasites of all sorts, colonizing mold toxicity, viruses, mycoplasma, and then also dealing with the toxicity and doing it in an order that actually makes sense to your body is the key because so many times I hear people saying, Lyme's the number one thing you have to deal with that, or mold, you have to start there, or EBV is the root of all evil. And I'm like, yes and no to both of and all of those. It's the single person that comes in and their body's makeup and the way that that onion grew, as you mentioned earlier, the, as being a, an onion to peel, that makes it so unique for each person to heal. So if you have a parasite that's so large, it's jamming up the liver, like a liver fluke, and you can't actually get toxins out through the liver the way that they're supposed to, because it's a little blocked up, you can't do mold first because you're just going to recirculate everything because it's not going to get filtered appropriately but if you're living in mold then you can't get rid of all the parasites because the mold toxicity is keeping your immune system suppressed Mm -hmm. so i just told you you had to do parasites and mold first right no it's like you got to look at the person and understand the situation that they're in to make sure you're making choices to educate them on on how the best way is to move forward um, and so we put together that roadmap that says, Hey, here's based off of my experience, the the best route to well that I can identify. And I would just love to just add a little notation here for everyone listening, Dr. Javen, you like, it is amazing how you look at everyone on a unique individual basis, because there are other functional medicine providers, like you said, that do not, I saw one that was not like that. And if you are seeing someone that is like that, you have the right to go seek better care to get the individualized treatment that you need, not being a part of like a, I don't know, a system in a way, or, you know, a protocol that might not be good for your body. So I love that you do that for your patients. It's huge. It's huge. Well said. Well said. Yeah. Because I think Well, and even in allopathic medicine, I feel like often there are just boxes to check, right? Like these tests come back, they're within the range that the clinic says is normal. And so you're fine, right? Then you go through this test. That's what the the practitioners are telling you. So it is really neat to see how you are evaluating people on an individual basis, because none of us are alike. You know, even Candace and I, who were diagnosed the same year, have the same thing, technically, we're really, really different. Our severity is different. Our reactions are different. Our symptoms are different. Everything is different. Mm -hmm. So I I think that that's a great point to drive Mm -hmm. home that if you're not getting that care, find someone who will give it to you. There are no two people that are saying there's 40,000 named bacteria in your body. You're telling me all 40,000 of yours are the same as hers. And that's just the normal bacteria that we know of and have named. 
right? So no, they're, they're not going to be the same. So the overgrowths of one of those different in your body than her body is going to cause different symptoms and, and reactions. Um, but I'll also say this for those listening, I don't find that there's like a, this is the baddest thing out there. Because if you follow the process that I just went through, which is a process, which seems like a system, but it allows for so much extra information to come into it. And, and every time we discover something new that people are dealing with, we just add it to the list and it, the category that it fits. So we double check it. Um, as you go through that, like, honestly, Lyme's not usually that hard of a thing to get past, which it's supposed to be nearly impossible. But when you remove the blockages, like the mold or drinking radioactive water or cavitations in the mouth, when you remove the blockages that would keep you from being able to get well, the process just starts to work. My mind was just blown a little bit. If you think about that, because I think there are so many people out there who feel like the process doesn't work, that there is no process that is going to make them feel better. And so to hear you say that as a practitioner, I think provides a lot of a hope for people. You know, it took me a decade to be able to articulate a process. Like I couldn't, I, I couldn't train practitioners in my own practice. I couldn't put together a way to create any sort of education around what I was doing because I didn't have it in a way in my mind that was reproducible. Mm -hmm. And although everything's custom fit that we're doing, there is still a process that we go through. Like you, you still have to live in a place that's safe. You still got to get the nervous system regulated. Now that may be through different avenues, but there's still pretty universal and maybe you have a regulated nervous system we skip that stuff i've got that too with a couple people right and then when you get into the protocol piece you just have to do the testing and understand the person and then listen to their body as you get going at the very start so if i try to go let's say do a parasite cleanse and their body just shuts down it doesn't mean that they don't have parasites or that parasites are the thing you need to stick to for an entire year it just means that you got some information so you take that information you add it to what you already had and you make it you go and make some new steps in the process um which is why like i said earlier um i never intended to be working with complex chronic illness that wasn't exactly like out of high school i'm like that's what i'm gonna do uh <laughs> but it's where i'm at because i'm curious and when I get a hard patient, I'm like, oh, how's this one? How's this person going to get better? What, what is their situation? And I start looking stuff up. And then as soon as they get better, they send me two people sicker. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, there's somebody worse. <laughs> like, all right, let's do this again. Like, I remember the very first time I had somebody that was, was obviously reactive to supplements, but then they couldn't even take 30 seconds of red light therapy. And I go, oh, that's that's a new level. And that happened again. And I was like, so they're not making it up. Like a, a secondary person, like another person had it happen. I'm like, okay, got it. <laughs> I love that you're willing to ask deeper questions. Yeah. That just, that phrase just keeps coming into my mind. I think a lot of providers don't because it takes so much time and energy like you're describing. So thank you for doing that for everyone in the chronic illness, you know, community we need providers like you. And it sounds like you sort of let the universe drive you, let whatever you want to call it, the force, your experiences, all these things drive you to where you need to be. And it sounds like you're exactly where you need to be right now. And speaking of where you are, I would love to dive in a little bit to the fact that you live in Kansas or that the, you practice in Kansas City, which we know is a hotbed for Lone Star Ticks. We get so many people who reach out to us from Missouri. Um, and I'm curious if you have noticed an uptick in tick-borne diseases, if you've noticed any patterns, if you've seen specifically more people coming in with alpha-gal syndrome, if you're diagnosing them with alpha-gal syndrome, if you can address any of that. So my clinic is in Kansas City. We see people from around the world. Um, so I've got a little bit of seemingly everywhere that I can speak to. Ah, uh, gosh, Kansas City... I mean, there are ticks all over the place. You can't go outside without getting a tick, it seems like, in the summer. 
Uh, I don't really care. I'm not, that's where I'm at now. I'm not phased by ticks. I'm going outside. I'm playing in the, the dirt and the mud and, and walking under trees. I, I don't care because once you get your immune system healthy, by the way, when a tick bites you and spits potentially Lyme into your body, your body has to be in a position of weakness where the immune system cannot respond appropriately to defend you for an infection to take place. Wow. So my goal is not to be a fearful of the bite, but to be in a place where my body can defend itself. Um, so making that statement, I wanted to say that because I feel like when you're, when we're talking about podcasts, it's just so scary, right? Like, yes, I'm seeing more alpha gal than ever before. Um, I don't know that I'm specifically running all the testing to always diagnose it because like I said, I'm usually like the end of the line, not the start Sure. personally. So I think most people are getting to me and it's already there. I feel like at least here in Kansas city, I'm not going to say that your average doctor is going to, but like maybe by number five versus like me at 20, um, they're like, Oh, well, you can't eat any red meat. Well, there's this like weird tick thing that, that I heard once at a, you know, continuing ed because that's where a lot of doctors hear about like the weird stuff. And they're like, Oh, you're alpha gal. Well, just don't eat red meat for the rest of your life. And like, or mammalian meat for the rest of your life. And, and that's that. So, um, by the time they get to me, I'm like, okay, well, yeah, don't eat that. But at the same time, the same time, let's figure out why your body is in a position where it could, first of all, have gotten that situation mm -hmm. because although, yes, I understand that you reacted to meat. Why? Yeah. Now, once we ask the question why, and we start looking and, and diving into kind of all the things that I mentioned today from nervous system infection to toxins, if we were to remove all that, could you see symptoms go away, such as food allergies, other allergies, um, histamine reactions, anaphylaxis? I mean, I've had people lose anaphylaxis plenty of times, like lose it or, or they're able to have those foods in my practice. Usually the people don't do it on purpose. They just start getting more lax because they're having less reactions. And then they're like, oh, oops. I mean, that's what I did with almonds. I didn't know I was not allergic to almonds. And I was eating a dip at a buddy's house on New Year's. And I was like, man, this dip is really good. What is it? It's like, oh, that's like an almond something, something dip. And I was like, oh, crap. Because mine, <laughs> mine wasn't anaphylaxis like immediate. It was, it was okay, I ate that food. I'm going to have diarrhea in like 30 minutes. And my eyes are going to start to turn black. And my throat's going to get really, really tight. And then it's going to hurt. But I didn't have like the closing. So I was just like, well, there goes my night. This is going to be rough. <laughs> and ended up nothing happened. So then I go, and, I, and I'm like, maybe they were, didn't know what they were talking about. You know? So then I ate an almond. And I was fine. And now I eat almonds whenever I want. But I've had clients that were anaphylactic to black walnut. I've had alpha gal clients that once you've reset everything, and sometimes that requires a five day water fast after you've gotten rid of everything you can find through all the research and, and labs. Uh, sometimes once you get that reset in there, you can get a lot of things back. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of hope and there's a, I loved what you said about not being scared to be outside. Like mm -hmm. that is something we built two alpha gals on was helping people move out of that survival state into reinvention, resilience, and joy, regardless of if you ever get it back, if you don't, you know, whatever it's, how can you live in joy in this moment that you have? And something that was super important has always been really important to Debbie and I is music. And we've heard that the last question is the hardest for everyone <laughs> <laughs> that comes on here. Um, so we'd love to know what song or artist in this moment or for all time brings you joy. So I looked at this and I laughed because there's been one song that's been my favorite my whole life. And I'm a Midwestern boy. And my dad said, there's two types of music when I was growing up, country and Western. <laughs> so that's all I got exposed to growing up. Uh, just to give everybody a background. And for whatever reason, Garth Brooks' song, Standing Outside the Fire, always was one that I loved. 
And, you know, even on this podcast, it's like, that'll actually kind of tie in and make sense. And, <laughs> you know, I think he's talking more about like love and, and dating and that sort of thing. But the whole song's premise is don't be afraid to get back out there and, you know, get into the fire, whether that fire for you is the fear of a tick or trying another doctor, trying another supplement, or the one that so many of the people I work with don't want to try, but so many do doing some work in the mental health space on your nervous system. Um, you know, whether that's, like I said, going to a therapist or EMDR or doing the physical therapy portion, the limbic retraining, somatic retraining, you know, standing outside the fire only leaves you exactly where you're at and doesn't bring the joy. doesn't bring the healing and, Sometimes you just got to take one step forward. That ties things up neatly, very beautifully, pretty little bow on top. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. Jabin, we cannot thank you enough for spending this time with us, answering our questions, sharing about these amazing things that you're doing. So thank you very much for being on the podcast with us tonight. We look forward to chatting with you again in the future. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us today on In the Tall Grass. Visit us at 2alphagals.com, that's T-W-O alphagals.com, or you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at 2alphagals. If you enjoyed listening, please leave a review and help us grow this community. We're all faced with obstacles on our journey, whether it be food allergies or tick-borne diseases. You might outgrow the reactions, but you won't outgrow the person you become. Ticks suck, but life doesn't have to.